Produced fluids coming from the oil wells contain oil, dissolved gases, solids, and water. The impurities of solids, water, and dissolved or solution gases must be removed to a certain level called a specification before the oil can be sold. Failure to do so results in products that are non-sellable or off-specification. Oil must be processed to remove the solution gases which create safety hazards to the workers who process, store, and transport this liquid material. Light hydrocarbon gases are flammable and explosive when released to the atmosphere where they can mix with oxygen. All that is missing is an ignition source. Removing these gases reduces the risk of fire and explosion from the production facilities, storage, and transportation systems. If the produced fluids are sour, it means they contain materials that react with water to form acids, such as carbon dioxide and hydrogen sulfide, H2S. Reducing the H2S concentration reduces the risk of human contact with this highly toxic gas, which causes respiratory distress, respiratory failure, and potentially death by asphyxiation. Limits have been established for the H2S level that humans can be exposed to, measured in parts per million by occupational health and safety requirements by location around the world. H2S gas is also highly flammable and explosive, so reducing the H2S content makes the handling, storage, and transportation of the sales oil safer by minimizing the amount of gas that can be liberated from the sales oil. Sales oil can sometimes contain benzene, a known carcinogen to humans. If ingested, the benzene causes stomach cancer in humans and occupational health and safety have set gaseous limits to reduce this risk. If the raw oil does not contain benzene naturally, it is not created in the oil processing, so this risk does not exist. Solution gases contain methane, which is a known-to-be-harmful greenhouse gas. The oil may also contain carbon dioxide, a less harmful greenhouse gas. Release of these gases to the atmosphere is damaging to the environment, and as a result, there are limits that vary by location around the world set by the local regulatory agency. Compliance with these limits is a condition of oil processing and transporting operations licenses and must be met at all times. All liquids are agitated by the process of transportation regardless of whether it is a pipeline due to the pumps, rail car, and truck tankers shaking down the rails and roadways. Agitation of the fluid encourages the lighter gases to move from the liquid phase to the vapor phase. As a result, the amount of light gases must be reduced or stabilized to a term called stock tank conditions, so that minimal amounts are generated during storage and transportation. Warming the liquid also encourages light gases to move into the vapor phase, such as transporting by ship from a cold country to a warm country. Failure to consistently produce specification sales oil can result in curtailment of transport and buyers who refuse to accept the sales oil. This can result in a bad reputation, a lack of shippers or buyers, and ultimately the shutdown of the oil processing facilities and loss of revenue from that resource. The successful removal, containment, and further processing of light hydrocarbon gases can result in incremental revenue streams of natural gas sales or liquefied natural gas LNG as a fuel source, ethane for conversion into plastics, propane and butane as petrochemical feedstocks, and condensate or light oil. Alternatively, the light gases can be converted into heavier hydrocarbon liquids or diesel fuel called gas to liquids, or GTL for short. Sales oil storage tanks are required to maintain a certain availability of inventory in the event of a disruption to the sales transport, curtailment on a pipeline due to maintenance or failure. 
inclement weather that disrupts rail or truck traffic, fog, storms, hijacking, or terrorism that interrupts ship traffic, forest fires that require the closure of roadways. The amount of inventory required is a function of the risk of sales oil takeaway interruptions and varies by location. Remember, the amount of oil production varies with time and normally declines with age, resulting in more inventory capacity later in the life cycle of the facility, improving reliability due to excess tankage. How much do you need? It depends on how much capital investment you want to make to reduce the risk to your facility's revenue stream. To reduce costs, oil tanks are designed for near-atmospheric pressure conditions. The lower the amount of light gases in the sales oil, the lower the pressure that is created in the tanks by the light gases coming out of solution into the vapor phase. A blanket gas system can be installed to add gas to the top of the tank if the pressure gets too low, avoiding a collapse or implosion of the tank. If the blanket gas system fails into the open position, it can introduce too much blanket gas causing an overpressure on the tank. Gases will naturally come out of solution into the vapor space and potentially create an overpressure due to the reduced operating pressure in the tank, which is close to atmospheric, compared to all of the upstream equipment, which will operate at significantly higher pressures. There is also the potential for increased temperature due to the sun shining on the tank. A higher temperature results in more energy causing the molecules to go from liquid to gas phase. A tank painted dark will absorb more heat and increase the temperature more than a lightly colored tank, which often dictates the color choice of the exterior of the tank. The vapor space above the liquid is also displaced or squeezed out as you fill the tank with sales oil. These extra vapors must be removed to prevent an overpressure of the tank. This overpressure can be managed by removing the excess gases with a vapor recovery unit, or VRU. This also reduces the amount of emissions from the tank with improved worker safety, reduces greenhouse gas emissions, and reduces the risk of fire or explosion. In the event of a blanket gas or VRU failure, overpressure protection is provided by a pressure safety relief valve called a PSV, which can release the gases to atmosphere. If the production is defined as sweet, which means minimal H2S, the vapors can be directed to a safe location to reduce the worker exposure and reduce the risk of fire and explosion. They can also be directed to a flare system, especially if H2S is present, where the gases can be safely burned and convert the H2S into sulfur dioxide, which although harmful as well, will disperse and dilute due to the temperature of the burning flare. Methane molecules that are burnt release carbon dioxide, which is a less harmful greenhouse gas. As a third line of defense against overpressure, a thief hatch with a weighted cover is installed so that if the blanket gas, VRU, and PSV fail, the hatch will open, releasing gases to the atmosphere. Again, this is not desirable due to health, fire, explosion, and greenhouse gas issues, but acceptable for a short duration until the facility can be shut down and the equipment problems fixed and the facility returned to normal operations. When a tank is emptied, the vapor space will decrease in pressure until it is lower than atmospheric, which is called a vacuum. The tanks are not designed for vacuum conditions and will collapse or implode if the internal pressure is not controlled. Pressure is a measure of force per unit area. How much surface area does a tank have? Lots. And as a result, a very small vacuum pressure results in significant forces on the walls and roof of the tank, causing it to fail catastrophically, which results in downtime, loss of the tank asset, and the cost of replacing the tank. Sometimes the failure can lead to an explosion or fire of the oil inventoried in the tank. 
Under-pressure protection can be provided by adding blanket gases to the tank if the internal tank pressure gets too low. This gas can be solution gas or fuel gas or sales gas or nitrogen, whichever is the most cost-effective and environmentally friendly. Devices called regulators or pressure controllers will open to introduce gas to maintain the pressure in the event of a vacuum being created in the tank. The upper explosive limit of a hydrocarbon gas describes the concentrations where there is too much hydrocarbon gas and not enough oxygen, which means it is too rich to explode. Blanketing a tank with hydrocarbon gases maintains the vapor space above the upper explosive limit, reducing the chance of an explosion due to a fire, spark, static spark, or lightning strike. As a backup to blanket gas, a device called a vacuum breaker is installed, which will allow air to enter the tank to avoid a failure due to a vacuum event. Air is undesirable as it can create an explosive mixture due to oxygen and hydrocarbon gases mixing, but it is more desirable than a tank crushed by vacuum, so tolerated for short periods of time. After an event, the tank can be purged, which means the air with oxygen can be removed by the tank, placing it back in a non-explosive state. Knowing the specifications of the sales oil are critical to sustained and profitable operations. Being continuously off specification will reduce or eliminate the number of companies that will transport or buy the oil. Contaminating a shipper's system with off-specification product can result in corrosion, damage, and failure of their assets. Off-specification oil will cost more to process at a refinery and reduce the profitability. Lack of oil sales will result in the facility being non-profitable and shut in, stranding the oil resources feeding the production facility. Sale of the asset or bankruptcy will follow. Overprocessing the fluids results in a higher operating cost, but not a higher revenue, so profits are reduced. Don't overprocess your products. A small safety margin should be built into the design, as most facilities have personalities, with good days and bad days. The safety margin helps on the bad days. This skill module discusses the topics shown here. You may also be interested in the skill modules shown here.